Hello, my name is Donald and welcome back to part two of this series on working with APIs. In the first video, if you haven't seen it yet, there's a link up there in the corner. Uh, we started using the Yandex Translate component, so basically uh, interfacing or interacting with the Yandex Translate app. We were able to specify what language we want and we were also able to send it a particular string. At the moment, our UI is very, very simple, just so we can learn the basics. Uh, we've got a text box to send off our text, a button to trigger or to fire the translation, and a label then to display the response to the user. So in this version then, what we want to do is add in a little bit extra to the UI. Um, so one thing then that you notice the difference between, let's say, the uh, web app and our app is that they do a language uh, pair. So you can specify a language from and then put a hyphen in the middle and a language to. So let's go and add in two list pickers and we're going to create some lists for ourselves to allow the user to go back and forth between different languages. Underneath my little text bar here, what I'm gonna do is put in another horizontal arrangement. Uh, I'm gonna set the width of that to be fill parent, like so. And then I'm gonna put in two of these list pickers. So one is gonna be our language from and the other one then is going to be our language two. Let's change the text on those to reflect that. Uh, text here is uh, from, maybe you will be fine, and to like that. Um, what we're gonna do then is create a list in our app. So let's create a list of languages like this. And that's gonna be create an empty list. So in here in the list is create empty list. and the convention with Thunkable is that when you want to add items to your list, uh, it's a good idea to do this when the app boots up. So I'm going to start off with three or four languages here just to get going. Um, let's add in, let's say, French and Spanish and uh, German, let's say. Okay, so add these into our list of languages. And if we put them in alphabetical order, we'll have French. And then we'll have, uh, we can copy and paste. That's just Control C and Control V for the Windows users and Command um, C and Command V for the Mac users. And so that'll be French, German, and Spanish. Then what we want to do is um, display both of those lists as the elements for List Picker 1. So our list of languages will go here, and our list of languages will go in this picker too. Now what I'm going to do is uh, use the after picking event uh, to show the user what languages they've chosen. Um, so maybe we should put in English there as well. I suppose it's probably a good idea, wouldn't it? Uh, let's add in an extra language, no problem at all. Uh, and let's put in English up here like this. Um, so after picking, what we're going to do is change the text on the list picker to show the language that the user has chosen. So set the text to be list picker one selection like this. So selection. Okay, and then what we'll do is we can duplicate this block and then when the user has chosen a language from list picker two, we'll change the list picker two text to be the list picker to selection, so whatever they click on. Let's have a look and see, Just uh, it's not gonna work just yet, but let's have a look and see if um, it looks okay on our live test. Okay, so over in live test here, then we've got from, and we don't have any languages displaying yet, and we've got two, and there's no languages displaying yet there. So in terms of troubleshooting then, let's make sure that the app has reloaded, so these um, icons, or these items, excuse me, only load in when the app initializes. Uh, one thing I like to do then is maybe just change my screen title just a little bit, um, and then what that'll do is force your app to refresh. Initialize runs again, so that when we click here, excellent, so we've got English as our language from, and let's translate into French, for example. Now, um, there's not gonna be any update, there's not going to be any difference here because we haven't coded anything in our blocks to handle what happens when the user inputs these languages. So back in our blocks, we've got a little problem here in that um, we've got the words or the English words, English, French, German, Spanish, um, on our list picker, but our Yandex component expects these country codes like this. 
So what I'm going to do is have to, or what we have to do, is create another list. And instead of languages, I'm going to call it list of codes, I think is a better name. Uh, that's going to be another empty list. And one of the important things to do here is that when you add items to your list of codes, they have to be in the same order as the languages that you display. So essentially what we're doing here is creating a parallel list for ourselves where two lists are side by side. And hopefully this will be uh, a little bit more obvious um, in, a, in a minute or two. The code for German is DE, and then ES for Espanol uh, is uh, the list of codes there. The next thing then that we want to do is have some way of storing uh, what language we're going from and what uh, what code is going to be from and what code we're using it we're going to. Uh, I'm going to create two more variables for that so you can go any way uh, you like here so we'll have um, maybe line from and we could have uh, line two as well of course like this. Uh, so it's a good idea to give these um, valid defaults so we can go from English and the one I originally uh, went to was going to be French, like this, so that'll be F or. And essentially what we want to do is combine the two of these with a little hyphen in the middle so that we can make a uh, little string just like this one here. So we want to replace this static string with a dynamic uh, string from the pairs of languages. So I'm going to join together three different things here, three different strings, I'm going to put in a hyphen in the middle and we get to replace it now with our two variables. So the first thing we want is our language from and the second thing we want is our language to. So at the moment then, again, if we were to run this, it, it shouldn't uh, behave any differently. Uh, we can try this out if we want. So over here then, let's type in, how are you? How are you? If we translate that then, come on, view. so not a literal translation there. Um, Okay, so it's still doing English to French, it still works, that's fine. Uh, and what we want to do now is, when the user picks something out of the list picker, what we're going to do is update these variables. So the first one is for lang from, and the second one is going to be from for uh, lang to, like this. So that's this one here, lang to, like that. Uh, and what we need is to go into our lists and uh, use this select list item. So once we've picked something from our list of languages, what we want to do is go into our list of codes and pick out the corresponding code out of that. So our list is going to be the list of codes, like this. And the index, well, if we pick the, the index is just its position in the list. So this has an index of one, French is at index two, German is at index three, Spanish is at index four. So we could type in a, a static number here if we wanted, but then it wouldn't update. What we want to use instead is actually the um, selection index. So if you go in here, look at the different properties, we have one here called selection index. So that means if you click on the fourth item, this returns an index of four. So it says go into the list of codes uh, and find the fourth uh, item there like that. We can do the exact same thing here for language two. We're going to use language codes as well, but we want to use the selection index from list picker two. And that allows us then to dynamically generate uh, this little pair here uh, and to go and make any sort of translation that we want. So let's try, um, try that out now ourselves. Okay, so over in our live preview then, I've reset my app, uh, so let's go from English and let's translate into, let's say, uh, French. Uh, let's try the old reliable hello world again, like so, and then when we uh, translate it, it translates into French. If we change the language then to, let's say, German, we can do the same thing as well, so hello uh, world, like this. Uh, if we click translate, it should translate into Hallo Welt, okay. And if we try to do the same thing then maybe with uh, Spanish, we can change from the Spanish here, click translate, and we get Hola Mundo. So not too bad. So it does literal, literal translations for all those different languages. So what we've done in this app then is introduce the idea of parallel lists. Um, maybe another way, if we were to put these as inline inputs, maybe that might make 
a little bit more sense. Essentially what we're doing here, just to review it, is um, we've got our first language is English and our first code is EN. Our second language is French and in parallel with that is our second code, uh, F or. The third one is German and the third code is DE and the third, the fourth, excuse me, uh, language is Spanish and the fourth code is ES. Then once we are uh, translating, once we're requesting a translation, we join together our from variable with a hyphen in the middle and the to variable here. So that's just like the um, translation string that we passed to Yandex in the very first video. Um, and now we're dynamically building this to go from any input language that we want to any output language that we want. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you found it useful, um, it'll really help me out if you shared the video, uh, put it up on Twitter or uh, Facebook or wherever it is that you um, use your social media. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Keep on thinking. I'll see you in the next video.